strength of this food, may we live always by your life and rise in glory on the last day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together the divine praises on the last page of the missalette on the bottom. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus, the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, the Virgin, and 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins. And so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God. children's liturgy of the word. A reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. How long, O Lord? I cry for help, but you do not listen. I cry out to you, violence, but you do not intervene. Why do you let me see ruin? Why must I look at misery? Destruction and violence are before me. 
There is strife and clamorous discord. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write down the vision clearly upon the tablets so that one can read it readily. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment, and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. The rash one has no integrity, but the just one, because of his faith, shall live. The word of the Lord. to Timothy. Beloved, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake. But bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. Take as your norm the sound of words that you've heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord.
reigns forever. This is the word that has been proclaimed to you. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant who has just come in from plowing or tending the sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat? Put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful that, to that servant because he did what was commanded? So it should be with you. When you have done all that you have been commandment, say we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we are obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord the second reading today is taken from the second letter of Timothy. And St. Paul writes to his beloved co-worker, Timothy, in Ephesus. Paul writes, I remind you to stir into flame the gift gift of God that you have received through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, but bear your share of hardships for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. Well, I'm glad we have the confirmation class here this morning because the words from Timothy apply just as much today as they do, as they did back in Paul's time. Timothy, had received the imposition of hands from Paul in holy orders. Most of us have not received holy orders, but have received the sacrament of confirmation. At confirmation, the bishop laid hands on our heads, or will lay hands on your heads, and then anoints your forehead and says, receive the Holy Spirit. In confirmation, we have been given the gifts of the Holy Spirit to spread the gospel and to defend it. Yet do we really take that responsibility seriously? I hope so. St. Paul is asking each of us to stir into flame the gift that we received at baptism and confirmation. He reminds us that we did not receive a gift of cowardice, but rather of power to sow the seeds of the gospel within our family, our workplace, and our community. The love of God and the grace of the Holy Spirit impel us to go forth and spread the good news. God gives us the grace that we need to practice what we preach in our own lives and so give testimony to the gospel. He also gives us the means to grow in holiness. We have the sacraments to help us with self-control in avoiding sin and practicing virtue. We have the church community to encourage us and to help one another. 
Each of us has a job to do in God's plan of salvation. And so we can't be cowardly. We cannot hang back and stand on the sidelines of life. A little further on in Paul's letter to Timothy, he wrote, proclaim the word, be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. That means that we must take risks and accept hardships. Those hardships come sometimes with spreading the good news and making it known. October, in addition to the month of the rosary, is also Respect for Life Month. And taking a stand against abortion and euthanasia and any other thing that goes against God's gift of life is not always popular. Our society is so me-centered that objective truth is often disparaged. Often a life is judged worthy or not according to efficiency or convenience. The elderly, the preborn, and the handicapped often suffer because they are powerless to defend themselves and fight back. All you have to do is read The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich by William Shearer if you want to see how evil can take hold. One man, Adolf Hitler, dragged his entire nation into the depth of human depravity because most good men said nothing to oppose him. Six million Jews, along with Catholic priests and religious and intellectuals, were eliminated in order to prevent any and all opposition to the state. The number of murdered Jews is horrifying. Remember that the number of children aborted in the United States alone far surpasses the number of those who were murdered during the Second World War by the Nazis, by several orders of magnitude, in fact. Anti-abortion advocates have made a difference, and the number of reported abortions is in the hundreds of thousands each year instead of millions as it once was. But more work needs to be done. In Southern Illinois, Planned Parenthood resorted to establishing a shadow company to build the latest mega abortion facility there. And they used the sham company name rather than Planned Parenthood because in the past they had problems with tradespeople refusing to work, refusing to install cabinets or electricity or plumbing because they op opposed the mission of that particular facility. What this shows to me anyway, is that the message is getting through to people that there are still good people out there willing to stand up for the truth, to stand up for the preborn, to stand up for those who are weak and helpless. Dedicated Catholics and other religious groups need to keep the pressure on public officials. As Catholics, we cannot sit on the fence. Abortion is murder. And anyone who receives an abortion assists or advises others to have an abortion is objectively an accessory to murder. Now for those who have had an abortion or advise others or help someone get an abortion, the sacrament of penance is there for forgiveness and healing. We know from experience many people who have had abortions need healing, not physical healing, but emotional and spiritual healing. Every one of us has experienced God's forgiveness in our lives. If only we stop and think about it. Each of us should be prepared and ready to take the risk 
to stand up for the truth and be ready to help those wounded by abortion. But many of you might say, well, that's too hard. I could never do that. I could never speak out publicly on what I believe. And yet in the gospel today, when the apostles asked Jesus, Lord, increase our faith, he said, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you would be able to say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. What Jesus was telling his apostles is, you're not there yet. You don't have that powerful faith yet. Otherwise, you could uproot this tree and move it. But that isn't to be an issue of discouragement. Our Lord will build up our faith. He will give us the strength we need to believe and to practice what we believe. Jesus went on then to explain something about servants, which at first may seem disconnected from the faith. He went to talk about the servants coming in from the field after plowing or tending the sheep were all tired out. And when they come in, they don't expect the master to sit down and wait on them. No, the order of things is that the master says, even though you've been working all day and you're tired, you get me my dinner. And when I'm finished eating, then you can eat yourselves. Well, how does this tie in? What is Jesus trying to say? Well, he goes on to explain that said, by saying, when you have done everything that you're supposed to do, say to the master, we are useless servants. We have done only what we were supposed to do. We have done only what we were supposed to do. There's the tie. There's a tie to the gospel. The thing about the gospel is that it's not hard to understand. But it is challenging to put into practice. That's the hard part. It is relatively easy to be an armchair Catholic and to have an attitude of criticizing others without lifting a finger to bring the gospel to them. You and I are called to serve right where God planted us in our own community. Each of us has a unique mission to accomplish. You and I are called to serve God right here in Madison, Ohio. And hopefully we'll do that well. So that when we are called to stand before Jesus and give a report about our lives, we'll have something to show for our days on earth. Then we hope to hear Jesus say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come, share in your master's joy. I believe in one God, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, light from light, true God of true God, God not made, one from the church of the Father.
church. I confess from the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. With confidence in our Father's providential care, let us bring to him the following petitions. For all teachers of the faith, our bishops, priests, catechists, missionaries, and parents raising children in the faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those here preparing for confirmation and for those who are helping them prepare, we pray to the Lord. Lord for our society, that it may recover its respect for human life at all stages, especially preborn children and infants, we pray to the Lord. Lord, pray. That more and more people develop a daily prayer life that includes recourse to the rosary, we pray to the Lord. Lord, pray. For those who are ill, those listed in the bulletin, and also for Stephanie Berman, Margie Antler and Jim Coach, we pray to the Lord. Lord, pray. And for those who have died, especially for Ken Keller, Ruth Korolek, and Jack Cooper, and also for Rose De Robertus, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, dear Father in heaven, please. Uh, Accept our uh, requests, not because we are so deserving, but because of your great love and mercy for us. Right, not so much what we want, but what we need through your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks through Christ our Lord for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours he humbled himself and was born of the virgin by the passion of the cross he freed us from unending death and by rising from the dead he gave us life eternal and so with angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim Sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank Deacon Mead for his message today. Please pray the rosary every day, especially for our respect for human life in our society. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint, Saint Michael, Michael Angel.